Hey YouTube, it's your boy Veko. You can find me on YouTube by typing in the search engine V-E-K-L and you're watching G-Man's channel Preaching to the Choir Ministries. God bless. Hello everyone, and welcome to another edition of uh, Preaching to the Choir Ministries. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, that in, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The Bible also says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, that before the Antichrist comes on the world scene, before he's revealed, that there will be a falling away that will happen in the last days. In 2 uh, Timothy chapter 3, the Bible talks about how men will be lovers of their own selves. And in other places um, in the scripture, it talks about how people are going to um, um, not give heed to sound doctrine anymore. This is Bible prophecy. And whenever you see this going on, this should account as some type of evidence for you that, 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 that what's going on in Christianity is real. That there is a falling away that's presently going on. <clears throat> What I find mind-boggling is, though, um, is that many people in the scientific community sees this going on, and they ignore the prophecies that are in Scripture. They say, oh, those are so vague. They're not vague. This is something that's going on on a regular basis. Um, but um, in, th in this edition of our Preaching to the Quiet Ministries, we're going to continue with, the, um, with this study on slavery. Um, in part one, we talked about the transatlantic slave trade. Um, I spent some time talking about why I thought what happened in this country and and in some other countries that um that I found it to be disgusting that it was that 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 it was just morally like ugh. Um, I think I mentioned in that video that when I called the atheist experience, I was never really allowed to go pretty deep into what I believe about this stuff. So <clears throat> I'm gonna take this opportunity on my channel. To not only deal with Bible contradictions, but I'm also going to be dealing with this issue of slavery. Now, I think Robert Copeland has a point with something. Okay, I want to um, very quickly let you guys know what he said. He said that um, <clears throat> that God condones slavery. Now, I'm willing to bite on that now because I went to go see what the definition of um, condone was. And this is what the definition is. It means to accept and allow behavior that is considered morally wrong or offensive. Okay. Now, now here's the thing before you guys start getting all crazy with me because you heard what I just said. When he says that God is condoning slavery, now the burden is on him to show what kind of slavery that God is condoning. Because in our modern world, we understand that there are many types of slavery out there. For example, um, when Michael Jordan was a member of the Chicago Bulls, he was a slave to the Bulls. Let me explain to you what I mean by that. His owner, I believe it was, I, I hope I got this right, Jerry Krause, I think is the owner of the, um, of the uh, Chicago Bulls. If I got that wrong, please uh, forgive me. But the owner of the Chicago Bulls, um, yes, he's an owner of the Chicago Bulls, and Michael Jordan was a member of the Chicago Bulls. And when his owner told Michael Jordan to do something, if Michael Jordan wanted to be paid, he had to do it. They don't call him, their, their owner a boss. He is the owner of the Chicago Bulls. He has the final say of what goes on in anything that has to do with the Chicago Bulls. Merchandise, the players. He can trade you away. As long as your contract does not say um, no trade clause, he can trade you away and don't care what you think about it. Okay? Because you're his property and he can trade you away. Now, people don't like to hear that because people don't want to be... People think... think um. That, that another person shouldn't be told what to do. Well, if you're getting paid $30 million a year and you sign a contract and saying that, that, that you're willing to, 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 um, to, 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 to obey the rules and the statutes, everything that has to do with Chicago Bulls basketball, then guess what? You're his slave. And that goes for any NBA team. Okay? So, again, I would ask Robert Copeland to explain to me um, what kind of slavery did God condone. And can you show scriptural evidence to be able to show that God um, condones the type of slavery that you're calling immoral. Now, <clears throat> there's other forms of slavery as well. Um, if, for example, 
you are in bondage to something. Uh, a lot of Christians like to say that 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 we're in bondage to that that there are people who are in bondage to sin, meaning you have no choice but to obey sin. Then that means you're a slave to sin, according to uh, according to what we see in the scriptures. Or you could be a bondage to money. All you all you care about in life is making money and spending money and making money and spending money. You have people out there who they are absolutely miserable if they're not making any money. Therefore, they're in bondage to it. They can't get out of it. When you can't make a decision to do something else, you are in bondage. Okay? Now, <clears throat> and by the way, that definition for bondage is the state of being a slave. I want to read from Exodus chapter 1. And I want to show you guys something that is rarely even mentioned by the scientific community. In Exodus chapter 1, the children of Israel are slaves in the land of Egypt. But I want to read to you why they were slaves in the, in, in, in the land of Egypt. And we're going to see who was the one doing the condoning. <clears throat> then I'll make some other statements after that. Exodus chapter 1, let's start at verse uh, 6. I don't know if I'm going to read the whole chapter, but I might. Roman, uh, Exodus chapter um, 1, verse 6. And Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all that generation. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph, and said unto his people, Behold, the people of the, people of the children of Israel are more mightier than we. <clears throat> come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when they that when they falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. And so get them out of the land. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built <clears throat> and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. Does this sound familiar? And this is sounding like a certain uh, country back in World War II. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel serve with rigor. Man, this is sounding more and more and more like 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 uh, Nazi Germany. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, <clears throat> in mortar and in brick, and all manner of service in the field. And all their service, wherein they made them serve, was with rigor. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was um, Sephra, and the name of the other Pua. And he said, We need the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women to see, to see them upon their stools. If it be a son, then you shall kill him. But if you be, but if you be a daughter, mm, let them live. But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded, but saved the men children alive. And the king of Egypt called the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing, and have saved the men children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as Egyptian women, for they are lively, and are delivered er the midwives come in unto them. <clears throat> Therefore God dealt wise, I'm sorry, Therefore God dealt, dealt well with the midwives, and to the people and all the people um, multiplied and waxed mighty. And it came to pass because the midwives feared God that he made them houses. And Pharaoh charged his people saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river and every daughter ye shall save alive. You know, <clears throat> before I even get to some of the theological things that I just got finished reading. I don't understand how a person can read the Bible and only talk about God all the time. I'll, I'll, I'll save my opinions about that for the end. But anyway, um, <clears throat> what we see here is, is that the children of Israel was in the land of Egypt. And um, while they was in the land of Egypt, the king of Egypt feared the children of Israel because they... They they grew, and they were they, there were more of them than they were Egyptians. Okay, um, and the king of Egypt feared them, saying that you know if you know if these people you know if, if if we go to war, the children of Israel may actually join them, you know, and then fight against us. 
So they made them slaves in the land. And the king of Egypt looked at the children of Israel and said, what can we do then to reduce their numbers? Because these people are, are so many. I mean, what if they rebel against us? And, and, and he said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to kill all the men that are born. So he set midwives up and he said that, you know, if any of them have a, have a boy, kill, kill, the, um, kill the baby. But of course, these women didn't listen and they gave their reasons why they didn't listen. But the king still charges people, you know, to, um, to, to kill all the men, to kill all the, 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 the male children and throw them into the Nile River. Now, there, there, there's a lot of theology that's in here. The Egyptians actually worshipped the Nile River. So, throwing a baby into the, um, throwing the baby into the Nile River, it was a type of uh, a sacrifice unto their Egyptian gods. Okay, that's number one. Um, number two, we see, and I'm going to really emphasize this, that t on two separate occasions, we see that the, um, the, um, the, the, the king of Egypt is talking about killing all the children, all the male children in the land of Egypt. Okay? And at first they just wanted the midwives to kill him, to, to commit an abortion, or to or or when the baby is born to kill them, and then um, um, because they didn't listen, you know, they were telling the people to throw everyone into the Nile, to throw the um, male babies into the Nile River. Now, the scientific community will get pretty upset when God sends His plagues in the land of Egypt to kill all the firstborns in the land in the land of Egypt. And these people were innocent. Let me read this last little verse to you, okay? And Pharaoh charged all his people, that would be the Egyptians saying every son that is born ye shall cast into the river and every daughter ye shall save alive god simply did un god simply executed the same judgment upon them that they tried to execute on the children of israel unjustly and yet the scientific community will call god unjust in this situation won't say a word about the king of Pharaoh. Won't say a word about the midwives that saved those um, babies' lives. They won't say a word about that. They won't say a word about the Egyptians. But what they will do is they'll talk about, you know, look at the moral atrocities that God committed. An atheist is someone who has a lack of a belief in a god or a gods. If you have a lack of a belief in a god or a gods, my question for you is this. Why aren't you talking about the people in the Bible? I'm going to ask you this again. If you have a lack of a belief in a god or a gods, why aren't you talking about the people in the Bible? Because according to your worldview, if there is no God and he does not exist, then the people are responsible for this. In the transatlantic slave trade, human beings was responsible for man stealing. Human beings was responsible for enslaving Af African um, 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 blacks in this country. They're responsible for breaking them, giving them new names, giving them new identities, forcing things upon them. Human beings was responsible for that. But at the same time, as I said in my other video, human beings is, was also responsible for getting rid of um for getting rid of um um, um, um slavery in the land of um here in the U.S. Sorry, I was a little distracted. Something was in front of me. <laughs> um, and if God doesn't exist according to the atheist community, for those of you who are intellectually honest, then you should be able to open up the Bible and talk about what human beings did. That's something I would like for you guys to take away from this. But for those of you who are Christians and are having a difficult time defending God on this particular matter, I want to say to you, Exodus chapter 1 pretty much says it all. God simply repaid the Egyptians 
for what they did to his people. God was executing judgment. This chapter proves that the Egyptians were not innocent. This chapter proves that the Egyptians enslaved God's people. And this chapter proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that the kind of slavery that that um that that Robert Copeland is talking about that God is condoning is not that of the transatlantic slave trade. Now, I might be wrong about that, and there are other passages in Scripture, and we're going to be taking a look at those passages of Scripture in my next video. Um, we're going to be looking at um man stealing, what the laws are for those. We're going to be looking at um these rules that were made to um have Hebrew slaves, and we're going to look at what the Bible says. We're not going to be looking at a biased opinion from um, some website. We're going to look at what the Bible says. But guys, I got to show you something. Not only do you see that slavery was condemned um, um, in um, Exodus chapter 1. I want to show you something in 1 Timothy um, chapter 1 verse 10 that a lot of Christians don't know about. And I'm going to start at verse 9. And it says, knowing this, that the law is not made for, for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient. For the ungodly and for sinners, for the unholy and the profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for for uh, prejured persons, if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. The law was given to those people who were immoral. Look at the list for yourself. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. The law was made for immoral people. It was not made for a righteous person. Which is why the Bible declares that everyone has sinned and has fallen short of the glory of God. Now, many of you have seen proof that God... Um, that guy obviously does not condone um, the kind of slavery in the transatlantic slave trade. But guys, this is not by far everything that the Bible has to say about slavery. There are some passages in the Bible where we see laws being made on how to own a slave and, and, and various other things in the Bible. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another video. It's going to be part three. And we're going to be, and that's going to be a long video. That video is going to be about um, maybe an hour. And we're going to go through all those passages of scripture. And in that particular um, video, there's going to be at least uh, 10 to 15 minutes of a skeptic's point of view on it. And there's going to be about uh, 10 to 15 minutes, if not 20 minutes, on the Christian point of view on it. And the reason why that has to be done is because many Christians on YouTube are being looked, look, looked at as being people who run away from this topic who are afraid to talk about this particular matter. And I have no problem presenting the arguments that, that the scientific community makes against um, um, the Bible when it comes to this topic. But I also have no problem showing why they are wrong. And again, since we're going to be talking about this, when you guys leave the comments in the comment section, I would like to know your method of study on how you came to the conclusion that what you're reading in the scripture is immoral and you must take into consideration Exodus chapter 1 and if you say that there is no proof for the Hebrew that, that the Hebrews lived in Egypt then your other arguments can be ignored as well remember you're looking at this from a standpoint of a character of God right so if you're doing that you have nothing to fear to talk about in Exodus chapter 1 because according to you there's no proof any of this happened According to many of you, the Bible is a book of fairy tales. I always notice in Google Hangouts that whenever a Christian tries to talk about Exodus chapter 1 or try to read from that book, if you're in an atheist-dominated hangout, you're never going to get to read from that book. I'm sorry, from that particular chapter. You're only allowed to answer their questions about the difficult verses that they want you to talk about. But we're going to get into those, and we're going to see um, 
whether or not um, that uh, um, whether or not what they're calling immoral is actually immoral and then we're gonna call out what is immoral because again there are some tricky things that are in the scriptures so I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, the second part of this study um, <clears throat> um, I, I want to warn you um, now that in the next video it's gonna be kinda long because I only want to do four parts of this and I have to go into all those problem scriptures during that hour so I might seem like I'm rushing a little bit during that video but that's not my goal or my intention my goal is to try to give you as much quality as possible when doing those Bible studies but we have to go into them things I might even be using video clips I'm gonna show my face in that particular study I'm not going to um be doing an audio um, version of it this time so until next time guys this has been another edition of a uh, preaching to the choir ministries telling all of you out there to read your Bible and do what it says in context